In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to implement the four next loops and also something new to you guys, which is the for each, which has its place and it's also quite useful. What we're trying to do in this video is I've got a selection and I want to find the sevens. When I click find sevens, first of all, it's going to have this little title placed into cell C1. And then it's going to spit out rows that seven was found in in my original selection. We're also going to implement a reset on here, which includes everything in column C. So that's what we're going to make in this video tutorial. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you wouldn't mind, please like, comment, and subscribe. One like equals one prayer for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to sort of set it up and we're going to find where all the sevens are. Let's open the Visual Basics Editor by pressing Alt F11. I have already created a new module and named it Find 7. I would want to remind you that if you want to create a new module, you simply click the insert button from the menu up here and then the module. That's it. The first step is to dim i as an integer. That's going to be our iteration index for our loop. And let's type nr, which is number of rows. And we're going to start with the selection selected. So I can count the number of rows equal to the selection dot rows dot count. Next, we're going to iterate through all of those. In this case, I have a selection from 15 rows. And we're going to check to see if selection dot cells i comma one is equal to seven. If that is the case, I'm just going to output it in the message box here for our first iteration of this. So we set it up for i equals 1 to nr. And down here I will type next i. Now if selection dot cells i comma 1 equals to 7, then open a message box that is saying I found a 7. So let's go through this. Let's return to our worksheet and let's select the cell range that has the numbers inside. So from A1 to A15. Okay. Return to editor. So I'm going to press F8 through here. Remember that the F8 key runs the code step by step and we can also see the results into the locals window down here. Press F8 two more times and you see that NR equals to 15. Press F8 again. The VBA code checks the 4 number into A1 cell which is not a 7. Keep pressing F8 and now we're in row 4. And that is a 7. Very cool. So we're going to see a message box, a 7, and then we're going to keep going and going. So there's another 7 in cell A12, and then there's one more down here in cell A15. Nice. But what we really want to be able to do is to record the row, and over here in column C we want to output it, as in the example I showed at the beginning of the video. So instead of this message box, we're going to replace that with something. First thing I'm going to do is if we find a match, then we find a 7, then I'm going to set this counting number C, which I also need to dim as an integer. So I'm going to set up C equals C plus 1. So that's going to kind of keep a tally on how many 7s we've found. Next, instead of putting it in a message box that we found a 7, I'm going to say range C, capital, and little c. So little c is going to be our counting number, and that's because I want to put the first match in row 1. I want to put the second match in row 2. 
So on the first seven that we find, C is going to be equal to one. So I'm going to place it into range C1. I'm going to put the row number, and in this case, that'll be four. Then on the second match, C will equal two, and into range C2, I will put I. And I at the second match will be row 12. And I at the third match will be 15. And we're going to put that into C3 because C at that point on the third match will be equal to three. So let's go ahead and run this step by step using the F8. I step through this. I find my first match at A4, which is when I equals four. We said C equal to one. So down in the locals window, C is equal to one. Now into range C1, because little c is one into C1, we place the current row, which is four, and then we move up to the next I, and we don't find another seven until row 12. So when we find the second match, C will be bumped into two, and now in range C2, we're going to place the current row that we're in, which is I, so it's 12. So we can put that, and finally we keep going and we find our last match in row 15, and then we can finish. I'm going to add a new sub here, which is reset, and reset is just going to clear the column C. So let's type sub reset column C inside parenthesis dot clear. And at the beginning of the first sub find seven, I'm going to say call reset. Call reset then will run the reset sub which clears column C. I want to spice this up, make it a little more presentable. So I want to put a title in column C, in cell C1, that will have the text 7 found in row blah blah blah. Alright, let's get into our code to make some changes. Put the cursor after C plus 1 and press enter. Then we will add the following three lines. If C is equal to 1, then enter tab range of C1 inside parentheses and quotes equals to open quotes and we put the text seven found in row and a colon here. So this is going to be in cell C1, seven found in row and that kind of puts a title in column C. Press enter and type end if. Great. Okay, here is the tricky part. Now instead of being C down here, I'm going to have to add one. So we're shifting all the values down by one. Now when I run this, so let's run this by pressing F8, it calls the reset subroutine, which just clears all the cells in column C. And now we have to do the same thing that we did earlier. We found a seven if C is equal to one, only when C equals one. Now, I don't start with this because maybe our selection doesn't have any sevens in it, and we don't want this kind of being displayed unless there's some sevens. So if C equals one, then we add that title. That's only going to happen the first time because C is only one once. So now that we found a seven in row four, we've shifted that down from what we had previously had and then we keep going and we can just resume and that's how we can output where you can find sevens it's pretty cool now let me show you guys how we can do this using something a little different and it's new to you guys it's known as the for each 
Now, for the 4-H, it's a little different. It's more object-oriented. So instead of I in number of rows, I'm going to dim to objects. Okay, let's delete I and NR. So I will dim RNG, which is going to be ranges and objects, and also ITM, which is going to be item in our range as an object. Instead of counting the number of rows, I'm just going to say set RNG equal to the selection. So we're going to take the current selection and set it as the range object. Now instead of for I equals to 1 to NR, we're going to say for each. That's where the for each statement. For each ITM, so that's each item, in our range, so in RNG. I also need, instead of next I, it's just next. Now instead of selection.cells, we're just going to say if ITM. So if the item in our range is equal to 7, then all of this is the same. We're still going to do the C stuff here. We're going to put a title in range C1, but here we're going to say range C and C plus one equal to item dot row. So it's going to give us the row of the item. I should let you guys know this is pretty important. If your selection doesn't start in A1, so if you shifted this down, it's not going to give you the row number in the selection. That's why I like to use the next approach that I showed earlier. The for each is going to give you just a row number, the row of the spreadsheet. So it's not going to give you the row of the selection. In other words, if I made this as my selection, the first seven will be found in row 12 and not row four. Using the for next approach that I showed earlier, the first seven, if this was my selection, would be found in row four. So let's go through this. We reset, we clear column C, and then we set range equal to selection. And now we go through and you're doing the same thing as we did earlier using the for each. And we find our sevens and it acts in just the same way as the four did. The for each is quite popular, and I'm a really big fan of just using the for next and iterating with an index number. Plenty of people use the for each. We can then put buttons on here to associate them with the subroutine and the reset subroutine that we created, and then we can run it. This is pretty easy. From the developer tab, click the insert controls button, and then this button. Let's draw the first button somewhere there. And it'll associate it with the find seven subroutine. Okay, let's rename it as find sevens. And I'll do the same with this second button. This time I will associate it with the reset subroutine and I will call it reset. Let's test the reset button first. Cool. Now before testing the find sevens button, don't forget to select the range, right? Now let's play with the button. So I can find sevens and then I can reset it. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Before we wrap up, if you've enjoyed this sneak peek into the power of VBA, you're going to love what's in store for you in our Excel Macros and VBA for Beginners Masterclass course. Over 10,000 professionals have transformed their Excel skills with our VBA course. So whether you're just starting out or looking to sharpen your Excel skills, this course is going to be your ticket to becoming an Excel pro. Check out the link in the description to start learning today. Thank you for watching till the end. 
Thank you for being here, and don't forget to like this video if you found some value in it. And do subscribe if you have not subscribed yet, and I'll catch you in the next video.